Here are two images. One is 95 megabytes in size. The other, a measly 512 kilobytes. Let me repeat that, kilobytes. So can you identify which is which? This is the magic of JPEG compression. In the next few videos, we are going to do a deep dive into how JPEG image compression works. This video explains YCBCR color conversion and chroma subsampling. This series has taken me around 10 months to research, write and finally make the videos. So here it goes. Let's watch how JPEG converts 95 megabytes into 500 kilobytes. In the 1980s, while many people were transitioning to a color television, broadcasters were hit with a dilemma. How could they send video data to people who still had black and white televisions? Till then, broadcasters had always transmitted data in grayscale values itself. But now, how could they send grayscale values using red, green and blue? The first thought that pops into mind is averaging the red, green and blue values to get a shade of grey. So, if we have a pixel whose RGB values are 119, 185 and 67, the final values of each channel would be 124 each. Let's try it out. Huh, the results don't feel right. Something looks wrong. So what's the problem? Our eyes are biased and as a result, we don't treat colors equally. They are more sensitive towards green wavelengths followed by red and they are least sensitive towards blue. Due to this, averaging the colors doesn't work. To resolve this issue, a new color space called YCBCR was developed. There are three components in this color space. The Y component signifies the luminance. This can be thought of as the brightness or basically black and white values in an image. The CB and CR components only contain the color data to be transmitted. In this color space, we are able to separate the luminance and color components of an image. Let's look at how each component was calculated. To get Y, we first multiply the individual values of RGB with each channel's respective bias values or weights. This gives us the weighted RGB values we need to create a visually accurate grayscale image. Let's look at an example. We separate this image into its R, G, B components and multiply the red values by a factor of 0.2126, the greens by 0.7152 and the blues by 0.0722. These weights are calculated by the International Telecommunication Union by analyzing the rod cells in our eyes and how they respond to different color stimuli. Now that we have multiplied the values by their weights, we add them together and thus we get our luminance value. To produce color values, we use two streams, CB and CR. CB stands for chroma blue. As chroma blue increases, the image has a blue tone shift. The higher the chroma red, the amount of red in the image increases. It's as simple as that. This can be better visualized in a coordinate plane. Over here, the first quadrant is the presence of blue and red, resulting in a magenta color. In contrast, the third quadrant is the absence of both the values, that is, green. Now here is where we apply compression and save space. The process of converting the image into a different representation to then compress it is a common theme throughout the series. You see, the reason we converted RGB into YCBCR was to take advantage of the fact that our eyes and brain prioritize brightness over color. This means we are able to differentiate a tree from a rock better than we can differentiate a banana leaf from a cedar leaf. Here is where the technique called chroma subsampling is applied. Chroma subsampling basically downsizes the resolution of the color or chroma channels based on the ratio specified. There are three numbers in a chroma subsampling ratio. The first number specifies the horizontal region size or the number of horizontal pixels we are working with. 
the second number specifies the number of chroma samples taken in a row and finally the third value represents the chrominance samples in the second row of the specified region this is either zero or equal to the second number if the third number is zero the values sampled for the first row are also extended for the second row in a nutshell 4.4.4 is the basic uncompressed ratio this means we are working with 4 pixels we are sampling 4 pixels for the first row and we are also sampling 4 pixels for the second row if we apply chroma subsampling of 4.2.2 we have the horizontal color data being sent and keep the original vertical resolution if we have a 3840 by 2160 image then by applying 422 subsampling the final chrominance channels will be 1920 by 2160 while the luminance data remains at 4k this gives us a 33% saving in final size if you don't know what 4k or 1920 by 1080 is watch my resolution video it will be coming out soon if we apply 420 subsampling the color data will be halved horizontally as well as vertically this leads to a single pixels color data being used for 4 pixels this results in chroma values at a resolution of 1920 by 1080 420 subsampling results in the ycbcr channels being one whole one fourth and one fourth leading to a 50% reduction in the original file size and that's it by doing this simple trick of limiting the chroma or color bandwidth we can save up to 50% of the original file size note that jpeg only uses 4.2.0 in its compression pipeline while other ratios like 4.1.1 and 3.1.1 are technically possible they are not used anywhere this video covered the role ycbcr and chroma subsampling play in the compression of an image if you liked this one share it subscribe and i will see you soon in the next one bye